Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, NJM, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, the law firm of Gibbons PC, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, New Jersey's Credit Unions, PSENG, TD Bank, Community Education Centers, the New Jersey Hospital Association, and by these public-spirited organizations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the issues that matter. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Steve Adubato here at the War Memorial. This is the inaugural celebration. The governor, Chris Christie, we just spoke. He was uh, sworn in for his second term. He got an enthusiastic applause. You can hear the applause continuing right now. Um, it goes on. It's an interesting crowd. They're excited to listen to the governor. Um, it's a fascinating state. We got a chance to talk to a whole range of people about today, about this mood in the state of New Jersey. There's a snowstorm going on outside, but uh, Jersey strong. You're going to hear some of the people who came all the way down to the Moore Memorial for this inaugural celebration right about now. It's worth listening to. Today, once again, the people of New Jersey have given me the opportunity to serve. And I thank each and every citizen for that honor. And once again, I've taken an oath where I've sworn to promote the peace and prosperity of our great state and its citizens. We're here at the War Memorial in uh, beautiful Trenton, New Jersey. There's a snowstorm outside, but uh, it's warm in here, right? Yeah. Alicia, tell, tell us what's going on. And this, is this your first inaugural celebration? This is my first inaugural celebration uh, right here in the great state of New Jersey. As you know, I oversee state government affairs for the tri-state reason for Verizon, and very happy to be here. Uh, yes, it is snowy outside, it's cold outside, but it is, uh, it's warm and exciting right here, and I'm honored to be here. Joe, as someone who leads really the, the most populated uh, county in the state. What would you say the two or three top issues are if you were saying this administration, this legislature needs to deal with these two or three top issues over the next four years? Well, first thing first, that there we have a sunset on the salary cap, which is at 2%. Explain and it to folks who don't understand it. Listen, you have to keep within the 2% cap, no more than 2% for um, property taxes. You can't go up more than 2%. Can't go up more than two percent. Even less than that if you can do it. And people have been maintaining that for the last four years. But that sunset says it's March 31st. The same thing with the PBAs. There's a two percent on interest arbitration for the police and fire. So they both need to be voted on before March 31st. Like in Essex County, we have 27 unions that all the contracts are in the 213. In Essex County, we pay the highest property tax. That 2% cap, and I talked to the governor, I talked to the president of the Senate, and to the speaker. That's something that I'm concerned that that needs to get done. What happens if it doesn't happen? Listen, then there's going to be negotiations go on. It could, be a, it could cost the taxpayers a lot more money if it's not done because the PBAs and the unions would think that, well, it's gone now, let's try to get as much as we could. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the unions, it's just that, listen, in Essex County, I know we pay the highest property tax. That 2% cap in interest arbitration has helped us in Essex County. That's gotta continue. The honeymoon doesn't last very long. We get right back to solving problems, right? Listen, the New Jersey still has some serious problems. That's what the governor's trying to say. He said, listen, no matter what goes on, we got to serve the people here in New Jersey. Let's put the people first. And that's that was the main theme of the speech today. This is a gentleman who knows a little bit about weather. It is uh, snowing outside. We're in the War Memorial. I'm Steve Adubato, Wayne Hasselbag. He's the uh, head of the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority. It's a couple weeks before the Super Bowl. This will air after. But there was a Super Bowl of inaugural activities going on that just finished up inside. How'd you like that transition? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, 
obviously when we all woke up this morning and saw the snow coming down, everybody started talking about Super Bowl, but today was a really great day. Having been a member of the governor's staff, it's a proud day for me and for New Jersey. Why particularly? You know, I, I, uh, I had worked in another governor's office nearly 30 years ago under Governor Kane, which was an honor. And then to come back 30 years later to work for a friend who then uh, was the governor. And I got to work with him on a daily basis, and it was just a, a, a literally an honor for me to be there. How is this place, uh, the, the city of Trent, but more importantly, the state house itself, relationships? You've seen a lot of relationships over the years. Is it not as bipartisan, frankly, Wayne, not as cordial and friendly? It seems more personal sometimes than nasty. It's, that was the biggest. It's not your style. You know, I was, that was the biggest change I saw from when I came back this time. Uh, very different. I remember back then in our day. Uh, Carrie Edwards, our great our friend, we miss him always. He was never that way. He always wanted to, we argued, he debated, but it was never personal. I, I remember after every session, Republican staffers, Democrat staffers, we all go out together. Lorenzo's. We played softball together. I mean, it's very, very different now. It's unfortunate, too. See what happens. You come to the inaugural. It's snowing outside. Chris Christie gets sworn in. And... The cake boss is here, Buddy Velastro. I, now, you're not a particularly political person, but you would not miss today because, Buddy? Well, the governor is a good friend, and uh, I think he's doing a great job for our state. And, um, you know, I wanted to be here um, to not miss this day. What does it feel like being in there? You know what? You can just tell uh, since his sincerity. And, um, you know, I, I, I believe in him. You know, and I, I believe he's a man of his word. He's a straight shooter. And I feel like... He's doing a lot of good for New Jersey. And um, I, I feel like we're better off from when he came in office. You know, I don't usually get into the politics. You really don't. Or, no, you know what? Because I'm for New Jersey. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, if you're doing good for New Jersey, I mean, I get along with everybody. And I just, um, I don't really pick sides. I believe in when somebody says they're going to do something and they do it. And they really believe they're trying to um, make a difference and do something right. And you know what? Unfortunately, the, in, in business, there's tough decisions. You know, and, and it goes on both sides. Oh, so. Hold on, buddy, are you trying to say there's politics? <laughs> hold on, wait a minute. Buddy Velastro is saying there's a little bit of politics in the world, and not in media either, right? Oh, no. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but you know what, I honestly- Being in Jersey, it helps. Being from Jersey helps, dealing with that. Well, definitely, you know what? At the end of the day, for me, I just wish, look, I believe in America. I believe in the American dream and what it stands for, and I believe that we are the greatest country in the world, and us as people have the opportunity. We just have to get everybody to get on the same page, working together, quit all the bull crap, all the, all the you know, back and forth about being Democrat or being Republican. We've got to work together and just get it done. Now, this election has taught us that the ways we divide each other by race, by class, by ethnicity, by wealth, and yes, by political party, is neither permanent nor necessary. You see, our dreams are the same. A good job, a great education for our children, safe streets in our neighborhood, and core values which give lives real meaning. We're here with Congressman Frank Pallone, who represents a whole range of districts, excuse me, his district represents a whole range of communities down the Jersey Shore. While people are talking about a whole bunch of issues that uh, are going to be around for a while. The one issue, the one challenge that you're particularly concerned about continues to involve the citizens you represent affected by Hurricane Sandy. Where are we now, Congressman? Where are we not and where do we need to be? Well, I think in general for public structures, meaning, uh, for example, redoing the boardwalks, the streets, and now, of course, the beach replenishment projects, all those, all those are moving forward pretty quickly. Um, but there's still a lot of concern for individual homeowners and businesses that they haven't gotten their money. I was yesterday in uh, Union Beach, is one of the towns I represent, and um, you know we were we were there with United Way helping as volunteers to rebuild homes. There were other people there. Senator Booker was there too, and uh, you know we were there helping rebuild the home. And I asked the homeowner, I said, you know, did you get your your Sandy money? They said, no, we're on the waiting list. And so you know I. I'm, what do you say to them when that happens? I mean, it's kind of sad because, you know, on the one hand, it's great that we're there trying to help rebuild, but if he had gotten the funding, he probably could have done the work through a contractor. And so, you know, I say, look, uh, I took their name down and I'm going to follow through, which I do with so many people. I mean, in our office, we still have a lot of cases where people haven't gotten money, uh, mostly through the block grant, if you will, that comes from FEMA. It's interesting, you know, we've talked about Hurricane Sandy since it happened. 
uh, in the fall of 2012. And, and people expect the government to move and move quickly. You've been a member of Congress for how many years? Oh, 25 years or so. Okay. How frustrated are you? Just on the federal level, I mean, the state has a big role as well, but how frustrated are you? It's very frustrating, Steve, because you, you remember it took us almost 60 days to get this package, this $60 billion package passed. And we had a lot of opposition from Midwesterners and Southerners, many of whom faced tornadoes and hurricanes before. And, you know. Turned and, their back on Jersey? And, and they turned their back on us and wouldn't vote for us. So finally we got it passed. And, you know, we worked hard on a bipartisan basis to get it passed. But even so, it's over a year now, and a lot of the money you know, for individual homeowners and uh, businesses has not come through. Now, some of it seems to be because in the aftermath of Katrina, they made it more difficult they were afraid about you know, fraud and that type of thing. But I still think that uh, it's been much too slow, uh, it is, as far as the individuals are concerned. The biggest challenges we face, I mean, there's a whole range of important uh, economic issues, job-related issues that we face. If you were to say, John, what the two biggest issues we face from an economic point of view, from a jobs point of view are, what would they be? I think one is, again, uh, the state's ability to live within its means, and so that certainly has a big impact on all the things that the state's able to do, uh, everything from its bond rating to the projects that it intends to support. And then the second is if we can eliminate some of this uncertainty, whether it involves health care or many of the other things that are hanging out there still. Those are the two big things, I think, that hold people back in terms of should they create the jobs now or wait another month or two. Earlier today, we sat down with the Senate President, uh, Steve Sweeney, and he said uh, he believes strongly that there should be a uh, serious consideration of uh, the millionaire's tax. Yeah, I get a reaction from John Galendek when I say that, uh, when he says that, you say? Well, I admire Steve Sweeney in many ways, but in this case, I think he's certainly wrong. The millionaire's tax will do nothing productive. It may realize a short-term gain in revenue, but in the long run, it'll chase people out of the state who are the folks that create jobs, but also take their philanthropy with them. And so I think it'd be a people lose people? Absolutely. Actually, lose them as citizens. They may still remain here, but they'll establish residency in another state. And what do you say to those who argue that uh, a tax cut uh, is not financially doable at this time? Well, again, it depends upon the discipline that people have to reduce spending. You have to have a balanced budget one way or the other, either through taxation or, or bonding. But if you have the discipline to cut spending, it's possible. And um, the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey, where John heads up in northern New Jersey, uh, looks at a whole range of industries that are hot and those that are not. The two or three that are include? I think healthcare is hot, um, certainly, and will remain so, not just because of the ACA and how that rolls out, but with an aging population and more demand, you're going to see a lot of growth in, in healthcare and healthcare related professions. And the other thing, financial services. As the economy continues to pick up, banks and other financial institutions are going to find a productive way to put that money to work, helping build businesses and expanding the economy in New Jersey. So with all these challenges, you're still feeling bullish? Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. Because we're a state with wonderful assets, terrific people, creative people. And again, our better days are ahead of us yet. In addition to a growing economy, here is how our government, our government, our government will lead the effort to create opportunity in New Jersey. We will make it our priority to have every child in New Jersey have a chance to get a good education. No matter what adult we have to offend, no matter where you came from, no matter what sacred cow we must slay, no matter how much we have to change the conventional thinking, we will no longer stand for the achievement gap which exists between our best and least educated children. Why is it so important? Uh, even though uh, the Democrats and Republicans fight, uh, it never ends, it's a back and forth, it's sometimes nasty, but it doesn't feel that way on a day like this. Why? Well, it's important that it does. And I'm a transplant in New Jersey, but very proud From where? of Garden State. Across the river, Pennsylvania. So uh, I'm, uh, it turns out I have thinner skin than the native sometimes about shots at New Jersey on late night talk shows. And it's a great state and so much to be proud of. What would you say the uh, few biggest issues that you and your colleagues face over the next year if you were prioritizing? Well, the, the, the phrase that we uh, were drawn to, achievement gap. The governor talked about children and our commitment to close the achievement gap uh, across our state. We want all students to achieve. And you mentioned I uh, represent uh, community colleges. I'm an educator. We care deeply about that, and we're very pleased to hear the governor emphasize that. 
got to close the achievement gap. Steve Adubato here outside the War Memorial. It is snowing right out there, and behind us was where the ceremony took place where Governor Chris Christie and Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadano were actually sworn in, and former Congressman Dick Zimmer, a former assemblyman who I was honored to serve with in the mid 1980s. We to for one of these, uh, yeah, I, I was there for a short period of time before leaving. You served for a very distinguished career after that in the, in the Congress. Um, describe today. I think it was a, a very strong speech, a very strong note to begin the second administration. Uh, focusing on the serious and, and intractable issues that we're f uh, facing and recognizing that we have to uh, work together to get them done. Do you think it was particularly challenging in any way for the governor to deliver this speech? Because it was strong, and I've talked to a lot of people who said, hey, this was strong. Uh, any, is it any harder to do with so much interest in what is going on in New Jersey right now and the governor being challenged this way? Oh, there are all kinds of distractions I could imagine within his, his circle, in his own mind. You know, he, at his press conference, he said that he had had trouble sleeping. So it, to step up and do this. Oh, yeah, it's, it's quite remarkable and impressive. And um, I think that uh, it, it bodes well for the next four years that we've got a governor who can focus on his job despite all the crap that's going on. We're here with State Assemblyman Ralph Caputo, who has uh, been around a few inaugural celebrations. Now, we're outside now. It was warmer inside, but uh, I'll tell you, it's a wild day, no? Very wild, and I, it shows a lot of respect for the office of the governor. That many people showed up here in spite of the weather, and I think it was a tribute uh, to our, our state. Yeah, the governor talked about a whole range of things that he believes have been accomplished or caused him to be reelected by such a wide margin. But Assemblyman, moving forward, what would you say the two or three biggest challenges we face moving forward? Because that has to be done in a bipartisan fashion or it will not get done. Well, our pension fund is going to be very difficult to, uh, to match. And I think that the fiscal situation in the state is going to be one of the biggest hurdles. Confident about that? Uh, I'm never confident about it. I think it's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot of people putting their minds together to try to solve a very huge problem. Governor intimating that we may not be paying what it is the state is supposed to be paying. We should look at it, you know? I think we should listen and find out what the real problems are and how we're going to be able to deal with it. You're open to that discussion? Absolutely. And finally, with respect to Atlantic City, which you know better than most from your professional experience previously, a lot of issues down there. Yeah, well, they're, fa they're facing huge challenges also. And as chair of the gaming committee, we're going to be looking at those very carefully. The biggest thing we need to do down there that will not turn it around overnight, but will make progress would be? Bring more business. <laughs> <laughs> You're very succinct today. Well, you have to be. That's Get home. The thing that's going to solve Atlantic City's problem is the economy and more customers. Thank you, Assemblyman. Okay, thank you, Steve. We are freezing here outside the War Memorial, at least I am, but uh, well, the warm heart it's is... Really not that bad. Yeah, yeah, well, because she can handle anything, no matter if it's warm <laughs> or cold. Senator uh, Jen Beck, uh, Jennifer Beck, um, you were about the last person we're speaking to, because everybody wanted to talk to you inside. I gotta ask you, you were here at the uh, War Memorial for the inaugural celebration, the swearing in of the governor and lieutenant governor. Yes. Describe it for us. I think it was a great day. I think the standing ovation on multiple occasions and the length of that ovation really spoke volumes. About for the governor. For the governor, and frankly, for the lieutenant governor, too, spoke volumes about What the do you Congress. think it was saying? I think people are very supportive of them. Um, you know what? There are ups and downs in every administration. There's issues you have to deal with, and people are confident in their leadership, and that was the standing ovation. It's interesting. There's a lot of respect for the office, and no matter whether people agree or disagree with the governor, obviously there are issues that are going to be dealt with uh, down here in Trenton, and people have their own opinions. But there's a lot of respect for the office. But let me ask you, Senator, what would you say are the two or three biggest issues moving forward that the Democrats and the Republicans in both houses are going to have to face and deal with on behalf of the people of the state who expect them to do the people's business? Right. So unquestionably we have to continue to deal with the taxation issue it's foremost in everyone's mind it's something everybody cares about but it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you sit on taxes are the biggest issue 
jobs in the economy. Obviously, people are still worried. They're doing better, but they're still worried. Um, and then I think education. I mean, the governor laid out a pretty aggressive plan in his state of the state on what he wants to do with education. And that's also something we hear from the other side of the aisle. I happen to be a Republican, but Democrats talk about the need for reform in education as well. So those will be the first things we deal with. And I think it's going to be a great year. We started this journey together in a dark and foreboding time in our history when hope was at a premium and trust had been squandered by a government that had been unwilling to tell you the truth. Today, we enter the final leg of our journey together with more hope than we have had in years and with the trust that comes from partners who have shared with each other the hard truths that come from decisive action. We're here with former governor, former uh, president of the State Senate, uh, Dick Cody, who is, uh, I mean, you know what this is like, this whole inaugural thing. Describe what it was like for you sitting up there. Um, takes me back to my days as governor. <laughs> you miss it? Sure I miss it. <laughs> not the pro not, I don't know what it was like. Well, not the problems. It's good. Oh, uh, listen, the problems, you, you, you tell the truth, they tell the people, here's a problem, here's a solution, and you move on. I mean, it's as simple as that. Uh, uh, at simplifying it, but it is what it is. Let me ask you this, uh, Governor. Because uh, it can be testy down here and because, you know, politics ain't beanbag, as this governor has said, Governor Christie, how confident are you, with everything going on around us, the challenge is that the Democrats and Republicans, the Assembly and the Senate will do what is necessary to solve the problems that the people expect to be solved. I hope that we can put aside this, um, these issues swirling around the governor and his people to do the things we need to do. We have an incredible budget crisis going on in the state of New Jersey. I think that's our number one issue. The governor's already said he isn't want to do the pension payment that he signed into law. So it's going to be uh, a real, uh, Tough, tough problem come spring and uh, um, when we tackle the budget. So uh, it's important for the people of the state of New Jersey that we recognize there's these issues out there that other people are also going to address, but we have to do the people's business. This government, our government, we will end the failed war on drugs that believes that incarceration is the cure of every ill caused by drug abuse. We will make drug treatment available to as many of our nonviolent offenders as we can, and we will partner with our citizens to create a society that understands this simple truth. Every life has value, and no life is disposable. One of the last uh, uh, people to leave the War Memorial, he's done this himself, former uh, Governor Jim McGreevy. This had to feel good, right, be on that stage? Not necessarily being on the stage. What felt good was being here. You're part of governor. And, and actually, uh, I, I enjoy what I do every day in Jersey City, but being here for the governor, and particularly, I think he gave Steve a well crafted, a well delivered, thoughtful message. And also, you know, talking about the importance of addiction treatment over incarceration. And there aren't many governors. The issue you care about the most? Well, issue that, you know, I have the honor of working with people that are addicts or ex offenders every day. And, and there aren't many governors, be they Democrat or Republican, that are talking about this issue, let alone in the state of the state address. And it's something the governor speaks with, with authenticity, uh, with commitment. And um, I was just heartened by the governor uh, speaking to that issue. Governor, talk about um, the whole Democratic-Republican thing. I mean, on a day like this, no matter all the differences, uh, with everything going on, the interesting dynamics on a day like this, um, is everyone all in it together, or am I being naive about it? You know, I, you know, I think the change in government, and when you listen to BBC or you listen to what's happening around the world with how governments transition, it's violence, it's war, and something unique happened today, and that is that government continued in the sense of Governor Christie's re-election. And so I think Democrats and Republicans for this day understand what's important in the change of government and that they have to do the people's business. And whatever else occurs, the governor set forth an agenda on economic development, on educational excellence, which was very important. And so he understood that the people's business needs to continue. We are at the dawn of a new age of pride and growth in our state and its people. Let us move forward 
with the strength that comes from the belief that we have in each other. I believe in you, New Jersey, and I always, always will. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. And 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of One on One has been provided by Barnabas Health, NJM, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey. The law firm of Gibbons PC, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, New Jersey's Credit Unions, PSENG, TD Bank, Community Education Centers, the New Jersey Hospital Association, and by these public spirited organizations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the issues that matter. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.